Hi, we're the Orioles. And you're watching Lacquer TV with Benny. Yes, guys, just before I start, don't forget to subscribe here because I love you forever. <laughs> it means the world. I'll do your hair or something. You love Lacquer TV, I do, so just click subscribe or something. Come on. Hi, this is Benny. You're watching Lacquer TV, one of our very first episodes. We're here today with a very special guest, the Oreos. They're from Halifax in Yorkshire, and now live in Manchester. Tell us a bit about yourselves in your own words. Um, so yeah, we're a band started yeah. in Halifax, which is where we all met, uh, other than obviously me and Sid are sisters. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we've been playing for like 10 years now. Moved to Manchester and we're on our second album, which came out in February. Tell me a bit about Halifax compared to living in Manchester. Um, you moved here four years ago? Yeah, yeah, I moved here about four yeah, yeah, years yeah. ago, so, yeah. So tell me about Halifax compared to, to Manchester, sort of, the lifestyle. I think Halifax was like, a little bit like, obviously small town vibes, like everyone knew everyone, you couldn't really, at the time when we were growing up especially, it didn't really, like, I don't know, no one really had a creative drive there, and yeah. I think that was quite uninspiring for us at the time, but also inspiring in the sense that it what led us mean, to do stuff. What do you mean by creative drive? Um, I guess we were, particularly when we started, like we were kind of the only band really making our own songs, making our own music. Um, there were a lot of like covers bands and stuff like that, so it was quite difficult to like break out of that and actually mm -hmm. kind of create a bit of a, a bit of like hype for ourselves, if so, that makes sense. Yeah, so you said there's a lot of cover bands. So when you were doing original stuff, yeah. did you feel there wasn't really a market for it in Halifax or yeah. were, pe were people not really taking to it and well, you, it was like, you had to leave? Kind of got the bit, piss taken yeah. out of you a bit like yeah, at the time, yeah. but obviously like it, I think it came with the fact that we were so young as well and yeah, we just found like scenes in like Sheffield and Manchester sooner than we did in Halifax, I think. So why did you choose Manchester over Sheffield or, or Leeds or anywhere like that? I mean, the sort of big city in the north. Uh, Ez and I were born in Manchester, so we kind of have always had a bit of a... Like, yeah, yeah. it's always been our hearts, like... Um, well, you're both siblings. Yeah. So tell us a bit about working together. Well, we were talking about this before, how like it's kind of like good for ground in each other being in a band with a sibling because like I'd always tell you if you were being a dickhead and vice versa like yeah and I think you can't really get away with it as much because you've got someone else there to like snap you out of it a little bit mm -hmm. obviously like there is like arguments and stuff from time to time but I do think it gets resolved quicker with it being your sibling what, what to be honest. About, is it more the creative stuff or <laughs> is, it, is it just like you ain't <laughs> yeah to be honest <laughs> So we've got a little feature, a little Lacquer TV feature that we're going to be doing in every interview. And the one that we've got with the Orioles today is called War of the Roses, because you're from Yorkshire. Yes. And I'm from Manchester slash Lancashire. And you now live here. Yeah. And even though you've already admitted that this side is better, <laughs> <laughs> which it is, um, I've got a few questions to sort of use inspirations and where I'm from, where you're from, and you're living here now. Cool. So. First question is quite easy. It is, who sold more records, band from Manchester or band from Yorkshire? Oh, I mean, well, it's got to be band from Manchester. Yeah, it's so if it's not like a way, so of course, like, of course, <laughs> like because we've had Stone Roses, yeah. Oasis. Um, I was going to say Oasis single-handedly yeah, probably yeah, did yeah, that, didn't they? Move you on. Yeah, true. Actually, the Cribs. Yeah, from Leeds. Aren't Shed 7 from Yorkshire as well, I swear? Yeah, Maybe. potentially. An Embrace. Embrace. They're from Halifax. No, he's saying, he's saying <laughs> I thought they were big yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Who's all the ones from Stoke? Like, is, oh no, Stoke's not even <laughs> <That's> Yorkshire. <laughs> um, Stoke's closest to Manchester yeah, actually, yeah. isn't it? Right, next question. You love the Hacienda and Hacienda music. The Hacienda is a question. When did it close down? And what is the building now? The building's, I thought, was now flat. Yeah. yeah. And I'd say it closed down in, I'm going to say 2003. No, no, earlier. 97. 
one point for you. Damn. One point for you because you got you got eight oh, flat and ninety seven. <laughs> Shit. We all split the cost by the flat and turn it back into the club. Yeah, we should definitely. Do do you that. think? Still. Yeah. <laughs> lekker, lekker club. <laughs> The lucky ender. The lucky <laughs> ender. Yeah. That's not gonna happen. The name of the church. <laughs> Who is the most successful musician out of Halifax? Ed Sheeran. Hey. The <laughs> You're a girl-dominated band. Tell us some advice you give to girls trying to break into the music industry from your experiences. Um, yes, yeah, so we've had quite a fair few negative experiences, but mm -hmm. my advice would just be to kind of stand your ground, kind of don't let um, any negative feedback hold you back. Um, you know, if, if you're passionate about something, if you're really into something, it will happen and you've just got to keep at it, keep pushing through, um, work with as many inspiring peers as you can and kind of mm -hmm. creative people that will pull you up and um, yeah, just keep kind of talking to as many people as you can as well to gain experience and yeah. Yeah. So have mm. you experienced sexism before in the music industry? Like it's, yeah, it's countless really times. Like, <laughs> you're saying that, that sort of matter of factly, as that is sort of in ingrained into yeah, the system? Sadly so, really? yeah. It's kind of, it's got to the point now where, yeah, when you ask us this question, it's yeah. so kind of like... Shrug your shoulders type Yeah, thing. it happens on the regular, like. Aww. Um, even yeah. if it's so small as like, um, for example, playing one of the shows the other night, um, I was asked like, oh, have you got all, all your, your stuff, like your drum stuff, like, do you need to borrow any like drumsticks or a drum stool or... So you're sort of implying that you're not just as, implying as, as, that as I'm prepared. Not as professional yeah. or as prepared as the guys in the band or, yeah, and we've just had that so much. Yeah, and yeah. It's now got to the point where we're just like, yeah. Yeah, we've got everything well, just yeah. <laughs> oh, like, No, you keep doing you. Yeah. yeah. That's, all you, that's all you can really do at the end of the day. You keep doing you. Definitely. And we'll, uh, we'll break them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyone that's not nice to them, got me to deal with. <laughs> I've read in an interview of you before, Sid. Yeah. Someone has mentioned your age, but used it against you mm -hmm. um, in terms of your music and the music industry. If a young person is being told they're too young to be a, a professional in sort of any respect, what advice would you give them? Because I know you are very against sort of patronisation and mm. ageism. Um, yeah, I think it's, well we have been talking to a band that are pretty young from Halifax and they're kind of like up and coming and writing some really, really interesting and really cool tunes and like our advice instantly to them has been kind of like don't um we've kind of said like that you will get uh people kind of comment on your age a lot and that's a thing that is inevitable but don't let that again like don't let that hold you back like the gender thing like it shouldn't be focused on as an issue mm -hmm. age or gender race none of those should be focused on as being an issue or something to talk about it should just be like this band from wherever or this you know mm. what I mean it should be totally focused on the music yeah. and nothing else they, like, yeah you've had sort of like a double one mate because yeah, the girls yeah. and both relatively young yeah but, and I think people yeah. use that excuse as well a lot for like younger bands is like if there's girls it's kind of made to seem even younger as well yeah. which is like so weird but yeah I think you've just got to power through it unfortunately yeah look yeah. no, we'll do it yeah. <laughs> we'll do it all, all yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you live in Manchester now tell us about competition in a big city that young people may struggle with because of inevitably in a bigger city there's going to be more people doing similar things so tell us what you tell a young person who to be fair like don't view like other things as competition like just mm. I think the more you can like make friends with other people and mix and you know even if it's not your kind of music yeah. like you can still probably gain inspiration or ideas or like you know something from each other make friends yeah. it's enemies. always important yeah friends not enemies yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> peace and love yeah peace and love <laughs> peace and love <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ich <lacht> 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 Ich will gerne nach. Wow, really? <lacht>